What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with more content. And today we're going to be covering more of the OnePlus Open and how to enable the smart sidebar. Now I'm really excited to show this feature. It actually might look familiar because it looks like OnePlus kind of took a few things from Samsung. If you've used a Samsung device recently, you'll know that they have the edge panel and that's what the smart sidebar reminds me of. Now they also borrowed some other features, mostly related to productivity that I've noticed so far that seem to be Samsung-esque. So as you see these videos, keep an eye on these things and let us know in the comments below what you notice that looks the same. We're also going to talk briefly about battery performance. Now this is my first full day running the OnePlus Open and things are looking really good so far. And then like all new devices, the OnePlus Open is not without its initial flaws. So I have noticed some connectivity issues that I also want to cover later in this video. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So first let's talk how to enable the smart sidebar. So I'm going to pull down from the top of the display and we're going to look for the settings icon. Now this device is running Oxygen OS. So normally on Android devices, the settings icon looks like a gear, but in this case, it's going to be a geometric shape here. And it's going to be in the top right hand corner and we're going to tap on it. Now this is going to pull up our settings and you can see that we're going to have this panel on the left side as well as the main section on the right side. We're going to pay attention to the panel on the left side first and we're going to scroll down until we see special features and tap on that option. And then we're going to refer to the main portion there on the right and look for smart sidebar and tap on that option. And here we get more information about the smart sidebar. You could see it's basically an edge panel from Samsung that pulls out from the right edge of the display. Nice animation here. And we can enable this feature by scrolling down. We can see that we have a section smart sidebar with a slider. We can tap on the slider and that's going to change it to a color. Now, if you're wondering, and I'm not sure here, but my whole setup here has red accents. And I believe that's because of my wallpaper. If we jump out here, you can see I have a red wallpaper. I set this device up so that we have the red accents, but your pill sliders may look a different color, but let me know in the comments down below just so we can be sure. So anyways, let's back out of here and demo the smart sidebar. So again, we have that on the right edge and I'm going to pull out on it. And it basically looks like an edge panel with a different shape. Now I'm going to try to hide this for a moment. I wonder, and we're going to have a pop up here. We're going to read some of this information for those who may not be watching the video, but maybe listening in on the podcast. So we have a pop up window and it's asking us automatically hide the floating bar for the smart sidebar. So we have the auto hide option, automatically hide the floating bar when smart sidebar is not used. The float in bar can be fixed in the upper half of the screen on the left or right screen edge. Or it says do not hide. The float in bar will always be shown and can be fixed in any position on the left or right edge. And I'm going to say I am actually liking the idea of do not hide. So I'm going to tap on that because this is what I was just about to research. Can this little tab, and hopefully that's what we're we're talking about here. If this little tab can be pulled up and down, repositioned, I'm gonna keep it on the right side because I'm right-handed. And uh, that's what we wanna try. So I'm going to press and hold here. And uh, it doesn't look like we can, we can do that. Let's see if I pull out on it and then press and hold. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. We're going to have to experiment with this a little more, but that's what these videos are about. So this one is just how to enable that smart sidebar. And I'm going to play with this more. And if I learn anything, I'm of course going to make more videos. But if you beat me to it, let me know in the comments down below some cool things going on here. And I may make some more content about it. But regardless what information I find out, we'll be creating more because this is the device for me at the moment. And the goal is to get all of us to learn more about the OnePlus Open. 
But anyways, moving on, I want to talk again about initial battery performance. Now, if you're looking at my display here, you can see I'm at 40%. And I started using this device at about 7 in the morning. I'm going to see if I can jump into the battery settings here. So we're going to refer, I'm going to close this, this uh, smart sidebar, by the way. We're going to refer to that left panel there in this page. And I'm going to start over there. So we're going to scroll down until we see battery. And you can see, again, we have 40% here. But we've got some good information. 40% can last about 12 hours, 25 minutes. That's really good. Of course, this is the first day. And uh, we're looking at a graph here underneath battery usage, last 24 hours. Screen on since last charge, six hours, 51 minutes. This is pretty good. And uh, considering we have 40% left here. So we're going to have battery usage by app. It looks like it's showing the apps here that have used the most battery. So to be quite honest, we didn't do anything crazy here. We weren't watching movies. We weren't really streaming music. We weren't playing video games. It's all basic stuff here. So just to go over this, if you're listening in on the podcast, WhatsApp was 10%, System Launcher 9%, Robinhood 3%. Google Play Services, 2%, Black Player EX, 2%, uh, TikTok, 2%. And I'm just kind of giving whole numbers here. Of course, it's like two point something, something percent, but we're just roughly rounding here. So nothing crazy here. I imagine if we're streaming video or playing music at a high volume or playing games, we're going to see a decrease in performance as to be expected. But just for doing productivity stuff, messaging, this is really good so far. I'm very happy with it. And then the last thing I want to talk about is Wi-Fi and network coverage. Now, I've had trouble mainly with Wi-Fi. Uh, I will show that I'm connected, but I won't have a good connection or I'll have no connection. And I was able to work around this by turning Wi-Fi off and back on. There was an update yesterday as well. And I think that might have been to make it a little bit better. Um, it might have helped a little bit. Maybe it didn't. Maybe I'm just thinking it did. Um, and then network coverage. I've had some issues with that as well. I'm not sure how reliable that's going to be yet. Because again, this is my first full day using this device. But something to keep in mind. And then the last thing I want to talk about, if you are waiting for your device to come, hang in there. It may not be a bad thing. The one major con with this device so far is that cases are very limited, protectors for that cover display and that beautiful Hasselblad camera are also limited or they are shipping really late. I'm waiting for a display protector and coverage for that Hasselblad camera module and I'm delayed. So I had to uh, order a cut to fit display protector. It's not the best looking, but just to keep that protected for now. Also cases, I haven't seen any with hinge protection yet. So I did put a piece of vinyl, cut to fit vinyl you can find at your arts and crafts store on the hinge just to keep it protected. But anyways, that's it for today's content. As always, thanks for watching and may the universe flow in your favor. And until next time, Leon, check in out.